Hi, my name is Kate Hensler and I'm a freshman honor student at the University of Arkansas. I'm originally from Texas, but here I'm going to show you a little more about art from my temporary home here in Arkansas. We'll be traveling to Bentonville to Crystal Bridges American Museum of Art and walking the art trail to find an original piece by Pat Music called A Place Where They Cried. Constructed in 2010, this 3D piece by Pat Music honors the thousands who died while enduring tribulation on the Trail of Tears. According to Julia Coates' book, Trail of Tears, Native Americans were beginning to thrive just before they were forced to migrate west from their homelands due to the Indian Removal Act in 1830. The artist chose this symbolic location due to its proximity to the northern route of the Trail of Tears. She appropriately named it a place where they cried to uplift the name given to this location by the Cherokee Indians. Pat Music obtained her Master's of Art at Cornell University and tied it to her home after she began teaching at the University of Arkansas. In the natural state, Music prospered, continuing as an environmental artist. She left sculpture work behind as she traveled, leaving Arkansas bird songs at the Washington County Regional Hospital and Mesa at the University of Arkansas. In each of her installations, Music beautifully intertwines nature with art, giving a natural feel to each piece. A place where they cried is a pure creation framed by the sights and sounds of nature, a living art. Using native sandstone, music erected 34 monoliths to resemble human figures journeying across a stream, a symbolic expression for a human tragedy. The arrangement of these pieces stand out as being organically yet intentionally placed. There is a linear aspect to the piece which creates a processional across the stream until the piece resumes on the adjacent bank. The varying heights of these upright pieces in their linear arrangement resemble the men, women, and children alike that travel together fleeing control. Varying color, shape, and texture bring diversity to each individual portion of the installation. Nestled within the trail system, a place where they cried beautifully encapsulates nature within its pieces, but is magnified when viewed amongst a full composition with the woods and stream. Each piece is harmonious in color when equated with the surrounding nature, varying in shades of gray to green. The overall shape of the installment creates a balance across the plane, unifying the group as one culture of people forced into mass expulsion. However, the assorted rectangular shapes and varying jagged or worn textures suggest the differences each person brought to their new home, whether it was their few belongings or the lack of their loved ones they may have lost along the way. The installation perfectly encapsulates Marxism, the methodology characterized by Karl Marx, the philosopher and social scientist from Germany. The driving force to create this form of artwork is prompted by the exploitation by a ruling class to push a manipulated social message in relation to political and economic systems through power. In the essence of the Indian Removal Act, Coates' text tells of treaties illegally signed and a lack of emotion felt by the supreme class. Not regarded as true citizens, many protective laws didn't regard their well-being or safety. White settlers petitioned the presence of the tribes, arguing that they were a large obstacle to westward expansion. Like Marxist ideals of socialism and communism suggest, these figures physically displayed the expulsion and oppression these people felt. The progression of the stones onto the other side of the river proposed the idea of crossing into new land away from maltreatment. Further, Pat Music's piece displays a form of psychoanalysis, a Freudian ideal. Combining imagery, history, and creativity, art in this form uncovers repressed feelings and speaks to a cultural audience through a new style. Because these rock formations do not realistically reveal human form, their stylistic formations were recreated into a history that was seemingly lost, but also reworked into a personal style perfectly executed by Pat Music. These pieces strongly resemble the men years of the Neolithic era of the Stone Age, literally meaning long men of stone, we can use past interpretations of art to recreate new ideas and to illuminate purposes of artists. This early art form gave a starting point for modern minimalism, showing that very few pieces are necessary to create a bold statement. Another form, a place where they cried may model, is abstract expressionism. The stone parts, assembled without regularity, make the piece feel abstract, especially because it does not have to be viewed from a particular point of view. Another common abstract artist is Jackson Pollock. His art takes minimalistic form, while the rest seemingly resembles chaos, though he intended each individual aspect. Though the stone formations don't have a pattern, music's intentional pieces are cohesive and follow a mindset and purpose. Lastly, and more common to Pat Music's art, she encompasses environmentalism in her work. Acclaimed as an environmental artist, music created a place where they cried to highlight the pure, natural aspects of her local surroundings only by supplementing it with a slightly unnatural set of upright rocks. The mossy green colorations are similar to that of the earthy tones of the trees, but the rocks stand out in their stiff, brute character. Her other local pieces utilize stone and wooden aspects that give pop music a distinct environmental flair to her work. I chose this piece because it wasn't confined to the normal standard of a museum piece within walls, but instead public for everyone to enjoy. It may also go unnoticed as a place where they cried occurs on the northernmost point of Crystal Bridge's art expanse. The many perspectives one can take when viewing this piece creates a dynamic and aesthetically pleasing piece of art, which leaves interpretation up to each individual viewer. The physical three-dimensional makeup of the piece allows for interaction and depth that a simple painting cannot convey nor tell within its strokes. One can put themselves in the Native American's place, standing amongst the stones, almost experiencing the oppression.